This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by Shane McGuigan, albeit this time in sunnier climes um, out in South yeah. Florida, getting ready for Daniel Dubois' challenge to Trevor Bryan for the WBA heavyweight title. How's it all going yeah. since you've uh, landed there? Things going well? Well, it took us about two days to get here. So um, we flew into to Miami and then uh, we circled the Bahamas and they sent us up to... Um, Washington DC because it was like too much uh, thunderstorms and stuff. So today's the first sunny day, but yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, it's got here, sa- you know, safely and uh, been in Mundo's gym sparring, and yeah, I've got the whole team with me, so it's good fun. Who's been kind of taking part in the sparring? Because obviously Daniel's just tapering down now, isn't he? Dan's going to spar tomorrow. Oh, okay. um, so he's got a few heavyweights. Uh, there's one heavyweight that's on the bill. Uh, that's going to do some rounds of him. Uh, Lawrence Sicoli's out here as well. He's going to do some rounds. And we've got big baby Miller coming across as well. So it should be a fun day. But one more little spar, I might give him six rounds and Lawrence will do maybe eight or ten. But um, yeah, we're going to get some rounds in. Uh, Fowler sparred today against the guy who's boxing, uh, is it Laranja, the, the Puerto Rican guy? Oh, yeah. You know, the guy's like 19 and 0 or 16 and 0 with 16 knockouts. He beat Anthony Sims at, sorry, I just got my thumb over. Uh, he's got, he beat Anthony Sims Jr., this guy. He's a Colombian guy. So Fowler did uh, rounds of that guy today, he's super middleweight. And uh, Adam Azim sparred a 3 0 Cuban 140 pounder. So it's been good rounds. That's brilliant. You're able to take them all out there and they all get that experience, especially for someone like Adam, so young in his career. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Adam, uh, Adam performed super, uh, super well today. So yeah, everyone was raving about him in the gym. So. I was going to say, Never I bet he's gone to and made a big himself. impression. Yeah, yeah, he did. Let's, let's put it that way. How's Daniel getting on? Because he's not, when you speak to him, he's not the most outgoing of characters. How's he adapting to the environment of these American gyms? Oh, he's loving it. You know what I mean? I think um, his dad, Stan, uh, he's got a brother that lives out in New York. Stan's done a lot of work. He actually spent a good few years out here, the dad did. So, so uh, he's always wanted to take him to America. And I think, look, they really take to big heavyweights. They, as soon as Dan and people like Lawrence walk in the gym, they, they're like, everyone's eyes light up. They just, it's a, weird, it's a weird thing. They love big people over here. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're loving it. He's, he's enjoying himself and he's in a good place. He's done some great rounds. He's had Jeremiah Mil, um, uh, Milton uh, has come in for sparring. We've had Peter Kadira as well. So Dan boxed him twice in the amateurs. So it was a... Uh, I think they were one one in the amateurs, but yeah, there's great work. Do you know what I mean, we've got some good rounds, and we've also had um, Jamie TKV over as well doing oh. some rounds. So we've had some great, yeah, you know, great uh, preparation in, in England, and we've now got the last two weeks that we able to get one spa, and then we'll taper it in, do lots of media and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's, it's good fun. Is it frustrating that even though Brian's the champion and he's talking a good fight, I'm beaten, people kind of almost assuming this is this is a walk in the park for Dubois in some circles. No, look, I mean, I was speaking to some guys today like, that go off and spar him. Do you know what I mean? They said, they said he's pretty, pretty good, pretty handy. So, um, you know, we, we can't take him lightly. I mean, you know, uh, he's beaten everyone that's in front of him up to date. Um, and that's almost a bit... It would have been great to have been able to measure uh, Daniel's performance against another heavyweight like a uh, Dylan White or a uh, uh, AJ or Joe you know I or a Joe Joyce or even a Hogovic or something like that. But th- there's nothing really to measure them off. I mean, you kind of measure off of an old Stavern. So that's, that's not really a, a, a great indicator of how good uh, Trevor Bryan is, but he's a gym rat. He's a guy that's been around the gym for a long period of time. Uh, you know, he's, they do loads of sparring over here. There's loads of heavy sparring. So he must be capable if, uh, yeah, you know, he's still unbeaten and, um, and and still winning. So we can't take him too lightly. Although the book, bookies have obviously made Dan a big favourite. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, look, Dan might hit him early and, and completely fold, but I think, you know, it might go into the middle round. So, um, you know, but we're, we're prepared for it. Now, although it seems incredibly unlikely to make it to the scorecards, is there any concerns in that regard with being on a Don King show out in Florida? No, not really. Um, there's concerns everywhere you go. I mean, you just can't live like that. I mean, I, I just think you know it will make it so one-sided that whenever he get you know when if it does get to a points decision, there's only one winner, and um, it's broadcast all over the world. So 
Uh, I know that we'll get the win. He's done two 12-rounders in camp and he's sparred about four sets of tens as well with three three fresh um, sparring partners. So he's really, yeah, he's really fit for this one. He's in a great place mentally. Um, and he's, yeah, he's just buzzing. And should he come out on top in the fight with Brian, would you consider him to be a world champion at that point? Because there is a WBA super champion at the weight. What, what's your view on that? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a very good question. I mean, um, it's a regular belt, but it's still a world title. Um, you, know, you can't discredit it too much. I know that people might say, you know, it's not one of the big belts. and But, you know, Scott Quigg was a regular champion. Um, Anthony Crawler, I think, was a regular champion. I think he got elevated. but And so did Scott Quigg because Rigondo got stripped. But, for instance, if Dan wins it, which he will, on uh, next Saturday, Saturday night, and then the WBC, sorry, the WBA strip Usyk because he hasn't defended it in time or something, then, then Dan will be elevated to super champion. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think it's, it's down to personal preference. And, but I think, you know, you can't discredit the fact that he holds a world title. Uh, he said on a media call earlier that he'd quite like the winner of Usyk and AJ's rematch. Would you be confident sticking him in with the winner of that straight after Brian, or would you like him to have a few more in the middle? Well, I think if you can get if you can get those fights, they don't come around very often. So if you can get them, you've got to you've got to grab the opportunity of both hands. Um, you get a chance to to fight for all of the belts. You know why wouldn't you? Um, so uh, obviously, bar bar the WBC. So uh, it's it's it's. I mean that that would be that would be a, a great fight if we can get it going. But I mean it's. Just, there's also politics in the heavyweight division. You, you know, you know it more than anyone. So, um, let's see. You know, I mean, he's on a different network. Um, but Usyk's probably going to want to target if he if he comes through the the Joshua fight. He's probably going to want to target uh, Tyson Fury. So, look, there might even be a, an option of boxing uh, uh, Michael Hunter or the winner of Michael Hunter versus Fury Fury. I think they're boxing for a WBA eliminator. I don't think it's a final eliminator. Um, but there's, there's great fights out there for us even if we make a, a defence against a, someone that the, the, the British public know like a Dylan White or I mean, he'll have to have a win before going into it but um, look Dan wants to mix it with the, with the top guys and I think you know if we can get if we can get any of the big names in the UK then, then that would be fantastic uh, Talking about the uh, Usyk-Joshua rematch Joshua has this week been linked with Robert Garcia um, as his new trainer reportedly he'll be coming over to the UK to train AJ mm-hmm. for that rematch does that in your view how does that affect AJ's chances in the return if at all? It, it enhances them uh, Robert Garcia is a very good trainer he um, doesn't take no crap uh, does it, he's not a hype man he'll tell you straight and that's something that AJ needs. You know, he's, 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 he had that in, in Rob, Rob McCracken and McCracken lost power. And now, you know, he had a load of people that he was bringing in and everything, all the decisions were AJ's decisions. And look, even now it's, a, it's an AJ decision, decision to bring in Rob, Robert Garcia, but you're bringing in a guy that's going to tell you the genuine truths. It's like, you're not doing very good or he's going to want hard sparring. He's not going to want tech sparring. He's not going to want, you know, do two rounds and jump out. It's going to keep you in there for rounds. So, you know, uh, as uh, as technical as Angel Fernandez is, he's not been a head coach for for a world champion yet. So, you know, to have someone like Robert Garcia in the camp is just a it's it's a very good decision. And the fact that all the you know top tier heavyweights at the moment, the vast majority are the wrong side of thirty now. You know, AJ Fury, White. Even Hunter as well, who's fighting Huey Fury. How yeah. you know much of an advantage is it for your guy that he is so much younger than the rest? He's kind of the next generation, but already knocking on the door of that world level. Yeah, I mean, it it's, it is the next wave coming through, um, and it, it's funny because you know you had the the Klitschko's that's just pitted out, and then you've gone the next wave, which is uh, Fury and, and AJ, and now they're kind of not getting to the end of their career because you can, you can keep your physicality as a heavyweight a, a lot longer. And you can, you know, a lot of the heavyweights don't really peak until they're 31, 32, but there's a very fine line. You go straight, you go just over that, that uh, marker and you, your body starts breaking down. And, um, you know, I think someone like, someone like AJ, 
he's not got as many miles on the clock as maybe someone like Fury because Fury's been a pro for a lot longer. So mm. even though he doesn't get hit, it's more just the training camp, the miles, the you know, getting up and sparring, hitting the bags and, and all of that. So um, look, I've got a young, fresh heavyweight that's a guy that's still willing to learn, still ambitious. And uh, that's that's what we want to that's what we want. We want, you know, the the next wave is gonna be the uh, Daniel Dubois, the the uh, even Hugovic. I know Hugovic is a bit older, but someone like him, you've got Lawrence Coley that's gonna be coming up as well. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting times. Talking of a Coley, what's uh, next on the agenda for him? He's um I don't know yet. I mean, we're still we're still sorting a few things out, and hopefully we can get a date soon. But uh, he's out here training. He's he's been getting his base fitness up, so he's starting sparring tomorrow. And hopefully we can get an end of July date and uh, you know get a defense or, or a unification. I mean, ideally we would like to get a unification fight, um, but let's see what let's see what comes up because um, you know you, you've got Don King that looks after the Carbu that's asking for stupid money you've got um uh Igorov versus or Egorov versus Glamarian that still needs to go ahead I know that Egorov might take a step aside money so there's potentially an option to box Gulamarian um uh, and then Bradis has got Jay Optea so um it's just so frustrating at the top level you know you, everyone's got to get their managers out of the way everyone's got to you know it's got to be good business for them as well as you so that's why it takes so long to get things sorted but hopefully we can get a date in the end of July and uh, get another win under the belt Does that kind of log jam at the top of the cruiserweight division filter down to CBS as well because he looked incredibly impressive uh, beating mm. Tommy McCarthy in their rematch he must be knocking on the door now Yeah I think a great fight for CBS is like Kovalev you know I mean he's a guy that's uh, you know, he's come up, he's, he's, uh, he beat Pulev's brother just recently. I think, did he, I don't know what belt it was for, but um, that would be a great fight. I mean, like, Eddie wants marquee names and, and that's, he likes to make big fights. So, I mean, I think that's a great, that's a great fight for him. He's also um, potentially got an option of boxing Masternick for an IBF, uh, a li- like final eliminator because he's the one, and uh, he's number one, I think, uh, Masternick's number two. So that would be for the for the IBF. So the winner would obviously go and box Bradis. Um, so yeah, he's there thereabouts. But yeah, like, if we have to have a few fights to sort of fill the gap between trying to fight for a world title, I think we need to get names. And someone like Kovalev would be a fantastic name for for CBS. And I think you know, um, you know, uh, the the the. His uh, own budget will definitely, you know, make that potentially make that happen. And what about Anthony Fowler? Obviously now up at middleweight, looking very impressive. What what's the next stage for him? Um, look, I think we got offered a fight in July the 9th. I'm not sure if he's going to be ready for for July the 9th. I mean, we, we're getting him fit again. So uh, his missus has uh, got a baby due on the. 20 something of July maybe even earlier so uh, in an ideal world we'd like to get him out before that but if not we'll probably go end of July so we're looking at a, a fight date then um, and I think really I mean it would be great to get into box for a British title obviously uh, Denzel Bentley's on, on BT so it's another channel but Frank's Frank or Francis is coming out next week I'll give him a shout about that um, but yeah, I mean, he, he wants he wants titles. He wants either the British or the European title. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny one because he's boxed a guy like Liam Smith that's been in there with Canelo and, and the uh, the top boys and won a world, world title. But Fowler hasn't actually won a British or, or, or a European. So he's boxed guys that are far superior to that. But you know, Scott Fitzgerald won the British title straight after he, he boxed Fowler. So it's, um, it's you know, maybe, maybe the... The route is uh, go, go for a European because I think Eddie's got got a grip on the, the Italian guy that's got got that, um, or try and do some business with Frank and try and get the uh, Fowler versus Denzel Bentley fight on. What about Robbie Davis Jr.? Probably not his uh, best performance last time out, but still in amongst the top contenders at his way. Yeah, I mean it's not a bad performance. It's just that guy was a sharp shooter. You know, he's, he's, that's that's the problem with where he's at at that stage of his career, he's won the British, he's won the Commonwealth, uh, European, won the European as well. So, um, 
you know, you can't really go back and box at that level. Um, you know, he, he lost to the, he lost to the Mexican on, on, um, before he come, come to do some work with me. And then obviously, uh, you know, had a, had a little two, two knockout wins. And then obviously we got not so much through and deep. It was just, I knew it was going to be a hard fight. And, uh, if you watch it back, I thought he won it. I thought he, he, you know, he, he just nicked it. Could have been a draw. Could have been one round for each fighter. Uh, by, by a win for one round each fight. But it's like, yeah, he got, got hurt a few times in the fight, but come through it and showed his, showed his grit and determination. Sometimes you've got to show another side to get the victory, and that's what he did. So um, I would like I would like the <laughs> Lewis Ritson rematch. I think that would be a great fight for, for Robbie. Uh, they're both at that sort of crossroads stage of their career. Uh, I don't know if Ritson would want it, but I think that, that would make a lot of sense. Um, and if not, maybe a former world champion. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll be, you know, go back to speak to Eddie and Frank Smith and, and see what sort of, I mean, we've still got one more fight on the contract, so we'll see what they've got in store. Ellie Scottney, punch perfect virtually. Um, in her most recent performance against Maria Roman. That must have been heartening yeah. for you after a couple of tough ones for her. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like she, she did six against... Uh, ganged off and then uh, she stepped up and then she did an eight against um, either Cantos and then uh, she got chucked in for a 10 rounder but she super fit it's just doing the rounds in a fight do, to doing the rounds in a spine is, is very different so uh, but yeah she, she uh, I can't remember the girl's name Gugani or something um, oh Guanini that, that, Guanini that's how you pronounce it uh, but you know Still got the, got the win against against her, and I think it just shows that she's just learning every fight, and it, you know she got a, she got a really a, a punch perfect, as you said, display of boxing um, against the former world champion, and that's just going to do so much for her confidence. And look, we still don't know if she's able to go down the bantamweight um, potentially as the Ebony Bridges fight, but if not, there's plenty of other opportunities, and and I think if she keeps boxing like that, she's going to really become a star. And then you've got the um, people at the earlier stages of their career. I say that Scott, he hasn't had that many fights, but, you know, he moved quite yeah. quickly. Still got a world title, class yeah. female, yeah. Um, Caroline Dubois, the Azim brothers, where are they mm. kind of on their development chart, especially compared to your expectations when they started working with you? Well, I mean, Caroline and Hassan are developing really, really well. Um, they're going to be on July the 2nd on the Huey Fury versus Michael Hunter undercard on, in Manchester. Adam Azim, chief support. Uh, so he's already <laughs> up to chief support, but he's boxing for an IBF youth title. We did the same with Lee McGregor when we had him. He boxed for a Commonwealth title in his fifth fight. Uh, but before that, he boxed for an IBF youth. So that's the sort of same speed that we want to move Adam because I, I think there's no point holding him back. Um, you've got Ryland Charlton out there that potentially could could be a great fight as well. Um, but we'll, we'll go from for this one in June and then maybe go for that fight at the end of September or something like that. So, um, yeah, look, it's, it's about moving him quick because there's no point holding him back because he's, he's, he's ready to go. Like, you know, I've, I've worked with multiple fighters and, and, you know, like I know the right speeds to, to, to push people on and people might think that it's good, we're going quick, but just, he's ready for the, he's ready for top, top quality opposition. Uh, and I think, if you know, if we didn't, if we just delayed the process, and he's, he's learning nothing from those fights, I need to get into fights that he's, he's going to continue his development. Before I let you go, just a quick one from outside your stable. Uh, we saw Tank Davis with another highlight reel knockout the weekend just gone, yeah. and then Haney and Cambosos going out in Australia this weekend. For you, who's the best lightweight in the world right now? Um, Lomachenko. Yeah. I think he's because I I don't think the best Lomachenko was uh, was on show when he boxed to to a female Lopez, and um, he's since come back, boxed a Japanese guy, boxed incredibly well, uh, and you know obviously he's not able, he, obviously he's not um, active at the moment. He's just with the troubles with Ukraine and stuff. But if he'd have boxed Cambosis, I believe he would have, he potentially would have stopped him. Um, and I think he, I think he beats up on, uh, I think he beats up on Devin Haney. 
Uh, but I think Devin Haynes is going to beat Cambosis on Saturday night. What, what gives you that confidence, especially given he hasn't got his normal training team with him? I just think, I think the, the, the Lopez fight flattered uh, Cambosis. I think he's not good when he, when he guys go on the back foot. When guys go away from him, he's not good at tracking. He loves guys walking onto him because he sort of dips his head down and throws a flurry of punches. And he's obviously got decent enough weight in his shots and, and whip. But, um, you know, Lee Selby caused him problems. It was a split decision. And, and Lee Selby has showed to, that he's not what he, what he once was, you know. But Lopez just came out crazy, got nailed with a, with a big shot and uh, was instantly down, kept trying to, trying to force it and became predictable. But I think when guys go on the back foot, that's why I think someone like Lomachenko or even someone like Devin Haney, when guys go away from him, he punches short and he's not, you know, he's he, he's, he's a good combination puncher, but he's, he, it's not like he's super busy with the jab and, and, and tracking and moving and, and, and he's, not, he's not the best at attacking. So it might be a boring fight because Haney will sort of keep it negative, but I think he'll win pretty com comfortably. Thank you.